everyone! My name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today we are in for a little bit of a ramble to be honest. I don't really know exactly where this is going to end up going because I haven't scripted anything. I just have very very loose notes. I just had one of those moments where I saw something on Twitter and I was like I need to talk about this and the world needs to hear my thoughts. So didn't write anything down really, we're just gonna go with the flow and for some background on this, I have done a couple of videos more recently where I've talked about like different archetypes of being a daddy dom or different archetypes of being a service sub. And every single time I make a video about something like that, I get responses from people that are like, wow, oh my gosh, I always assumed I couldn't be insert thing here because the stereotype I had in my head said it had to be this way and then you talked about or showed me that it could be this other thing and this whole new world of possibilities has been unlocked. And I really enjoy doing that because I do think so often, especially when you are newer and there's so many freaking terms and labels and titles and everything to know about that when you're just sorting through, okay, what do I want to try? What speaks to me? it's really easy to brush off a label or a type of play because you're like, oh, well, I think it's about this and that's definitely not gonna be for me. And then you might go years, a decade longer, assuming you're not going to enjoy something and then not doing it. And then when you actually try, you go, wow, my gosh, this is super amazing. And so I, I don't want anyone to have that experience when I can help it. And I really like kind of dissecting little bits of labels and really talking about all of the many, many ways that different people happen to enjoy the same thing because even under one label, different people can have wildly different experiences and that is really what this post is about. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get into sharing what the post actually said and then we'll kind of break it down and talk about it from there. So this post is more or less about talking about different types of sadism and they give four different sub-labels. The first one is service-focused. I like topping in pain play because my bottom enjoys it. Or I like seeing my bottom happy and satisfied. Or I get off to my bottom getting off. Then there's action-focused. I enjoy the sensation of my cane, flogger, knife contacting a human body. The action of the tool in my hand feels good. Or I enjoy the taboo of taking an instrument of pain to a person. Next is reaction focused. I enjoy the colorful reactions of my bottom. Moaning and screaming gets me off, or pain face is hot, or I like watching people struggle in bondage while I'm hitting them. And then finally, there's suffering focused. I like topping in pain play if my bottom hates pain. I get off on the suffering of my bottom and the knowledge that I am doing something that they hate in the moment. And then I top in pain play as a form of emotional sadism. And I don't think this is trying to be a definitive list of all of the reasons anyone would top in pain play or be a sadist. I think this is really just a starting point for a conversation, which is what I want to have now. I want to talk about my thoughts and feelings about these different like focus categories and then see where we might expand to kind of add in things that I don't think are really covered by those four existing labels. And again, really quickly, let's just do some more additional background because I originally thought this was actually just from Twitter and someone like made this and it was getting shared around. Turns out it is actually a FetLife post. I did reach out to the person who made the original post and was like, hey, can I talk about this in the abstract? Should I name you? Do you like, how do you want me to handle this? And if you guys don't see this video, oh, it's because they don't want me to talk about it. And then if you do see it, it's because we worked it out and they're fine with me like referencing their material. I'm not saying this is in any way an original thought or mine or I created it or anything else. I'm just trying to start a conversation based on something I saw on social media, which is I think like half of what YouTube does for content. So that's what we're doing today. And um, instantly I tried to think about, okay, where would a daddy dom that likes or is okay with giving their little pain, like where would they fit into this equation? And I think 
with the service focused category, the first one, I think we might be able to potentially expand that into also like caring reasons for why someone might want to give their partner pain, which sounds like kind of counterintuitive, but I think a lot of people who are like gentle doms or soft doms, if they use those labels, it, that's probably I think maybe the category goes into, which is like, the reason I'm giving them pain is because they like it or because it makes them feel good. And it can be from this like service top perspective, but it can also be from this like gentle, caring caregiver, like, like gentle guidance sort of thing where it's like, oh, I'm doing this because maybe they need it or I'm doing it again because they like it so much. And so even within service, I wouldn't say that service is limited to just like, service topping or even like service bottoms that are playing with like a masochistic top or a masochistic dom that also bottoms for pain. Does that, does that make sense? So I want to expand that into also being like more caring focused. And I do want to differentiate this from the next like original category that I have, which I would call discipline focused. I recently had a conversation, I'm not sure if you guys would have seen it yet, but I recently had a conversation with a Spanko named Jillian Keenan, who is another wonderful YouTuber who makes YouTube videos from her perspective as someone that is into spanking on like a very deep personal level. And she recently did a video where she talked about pain tolerance. And there's a skit in there where she talks about like needing to take a lot of pain and her partner who was a disciplinarian not necessarily being a sadist but kind of using it as like a tool and the fact that actually having like a a lower pain tolerance can actually be a benefit for some tops and like it's a really good video i won't crib the whole thing just go and watch it it's super good super worth it but I also think there are people that are disciplinarians that see punishment as a tool for like helping a partner reach a goal and pain is like a form of punishment. And so it kind of falls under this umbrella of like, I want my partner to do better. And so I give them pain and punishment as a way of putting them on the right track. Or I do this because my partner needs to be corrected or pain is a way for my bottom or my submissive to atone for their sins. It's all very much that flavor of like, pain is a means to achieve something else. Pain is done because you as the bottom deserve it in some way. I don't think that's like captured in any of the other categories about like, maybe the last one a little bit of like, I'm doing this, but my partner like shouldn't actually enjoy the pain. So like, I just like, there's an element of it with pain as well that can be about like, I'm using this to make something else happen or to teach someone a lesson. And that's like really, really the focus of it. And then from there, what my brain went to next is like, well, a lot of people who are really into discipline also really enjoy role play a lot. There's a lot of like angry school mom or strict mother or like bully older sibling or prison warden or like villainous captor sort of role play that can all happen both within pain play in general and then especially within disciplinarian type play tends to be very popular. But I think there are also people that treat pain or impact play, especially more like traditional implements, things like cat and nine tails or whips as a tool for enhancing role play not necessarily as like something that they would enjoy in its own. Like if you told somebody who was like really into role play as a sadist to like just whip someone with like no costuming, no context, no storyline, no like, hey, this is an 18, the 50s, like, like, if you didn't give them any kind of setup, they would be like, this doesn't do anything for me. Like they have to have that background and that like motivation character wise for doing what they're doing. And so the next category that I would make would be that it's role play focused. It's about administering pain because it makes sense for the role you're doing. It's something that enhances the layer of the scene that you're actually really there for, which is the role play. And also they like it when their partner as the bottom, as the masochist, reacts in a way that enhances that role play. They need someone who's not just going to be a bottom or be a masochist, they need someone who's going to embody being that like captured princess or that helpless prisoner or the naughty student. And that's really what they get off to. Again, it's more treating pain as like a means to an end or an enhancement onto what the focus of the scene 
really is. Now, the big category that I think isn't really captured by this, and I think is really, really huge, is domination focused sadism or domination focused pain play. And I think the reason it's not really included in this is because so many people see sadism, topping, and then also domination as like completely intertwined together. Now, usually you will at least get two that go together. People that are both a top and a sadist. People that are a sadist and dominant. Like they normally all go together pretty closely, but not necessarily in a way where I I think that all sadism is about domination because clearly we can tell from this list that it's not always just about domination and especially when you compare it to categories like the service end of the spectrum, though dominance and service can go together, like sometimes service topping is just topping. It's not about dominating the other person. And so let's call out specifically why it is someone who is more inclined to domination focused pain play would want to engage in that. It's about liking having authority over the partner, including making them submit to pain. It's about the pain and like the process of inflicting pain being a reminder of how much they control the other person's body. And the simple fact that when you are in control enough of someone to be able to force them to experience pain, that can give the person a sense of being really in control and being really powerful. I do think this overlaps somewhat with like the last category, which is like suffering focused, but I think there's an important distinction, which is when you're focused on domination, it's not necessarily because you want the other person to suffer. You might be indifferent about it. You might want your partner to enjoy the pain and part of their submission is learning to or enjoying the pain that you're giving them. But it can also be the case that like part of your domination and like you feel really in control when someone is not enjoying the pain and it's kind of like layered on top of each other because I don't think these are like exclusive categories. It's not like you only have to pick one and that's like your style of sadist. And that's the trouble with talking about things like this is people love labels, okay? They love labels. And like there is both the problem of people assuming based on one label, oh, that thing wouldn't be for me. I'm not really into that. Like that could never be my thing. And they just go off of the stereotype and they never try it. But then also people can really like latch on to distinct categories and go, oh, this is like a thing and it's a label and it's like distinct. And it's like, this isn't about creating more like just splintering things even more and you have to pick one thing. No, you can be multiple of these things. You might even be like half of these things depending on the scene you're doing, the partner you're with, the mood you're in, like it all totally varies. So just because I've got a couple of ideas in here doesn't mean that you have to just pick one and that's like, that's your style of sadist. and put it as like a thing on your Twitter profile. Like, no, that's not what this is about. It's just about like exploring all of the different motivations potentially behind this. And though this is labeled as, at least in the tweet, about it being about different types of sadist, Again, I think going off of the original FetLife post, it's more about delineating reasons for why people engage in pain play. And that could be sadism. And you might even hear some of these things, like especially like the reaction one or the service focused one and go, well, I'm not like really a sadist, but I do like topping people. And I do like topping pain play, even though the pain itself is not necessarily what, what gets to me. And for me, the way that I see sadism is it is very like pain focused. The reasons behind that pain, the way you process it, whether you want the partner to enjoy it or not, whether or not it's about them suffering or about them being really into it or getting orgasms from spankings or whatever, like that all varies a lot. But I do think there's a difference between people who are sadists and people who top for pain play. So this may be a little bit of like splitting hairs about I don't even really think this is necessarily always about different types of sadism. I think it's about different approaches to pain play. And so you might process this as like, oh, that label for me is like, I am a sadist that's also like a service top and I primarily like see my sadism as like a service to other people. You might also process this like, I'm not really a sadist and I'm just about the service and that's my primary motivator. Like the pain is just the tool that I use. So it's very complicated is really the answer. BDSM is complicated, who would have guessed? Oh my gosh. And I would love to hear from you all in a comment down below if you relate to any of these categories, if any of the things I've said 
maybe miss the mark or like am I missing anything that's really big and important because I, again I'm just here to try and expand what it is that people consider sadism or like pain play topping to be. I want to have a happy medium between pigeonholing in like tiny micro categories and never leaving them and like making assumptions off of like vague descriptions you saw one time on the internet, you know? So anyways, I thought this was really interesting and helpful and reflecting on myself because I am someone that is a sadist, but I am also a bottom and I'm also a submissive and I kind of like, I don't know, am I a switch? I don't know. I don't really like the term switch or like the label switch for myself doesn't seem right. And I've talked about another video, so I, I'm not going to get into that here. But I think for me and thinking about the way that I would process sadism, I think I could fall into a couple of different categories depending on the type of person that I'm with. I'm definitely not somebody who's into like super hardcore role play. I'm definitely not really like a disciplined person person or like a punishment person because like I don't want to have a partner that has rules they have to follow like for me like I, I mean I'm not gonna say never but in my head right now and and where I'm at and like what I want from partners I don't see myself having a relationship where it's like rules and structure and I punish them and like that's not really really my jam I think I would be more in the category of like reaction focused and I really like people that are like really in the moment with me and we're experiencing this thing together and they're like reacting to me, like giving me strong feedback. And this is one of the things I think people misunderstand about brats and like why people could be into bratting and playing with bratty partners is if you are a reaction junkie as a sadist or as a top, a brat can be a great play partner because they are all about the reactions and the actions and they can be so over the top. And that's one of the really fun things about playing with brats. So don't knock it until you try it. That's my opinion. You know, if you're really, really not gonna be into brats, don't go for it. But just again, don't close off your horizons, okay? Just don't close them off. So for me, I think I'm definitely more on the reaction side also maybe a little bit of service because like I want people to enjoy it but not like I, I don't want them to get off but as someone that's been in the scene for a long time and I've seen what bad tops and bad doms look like I would really enjoy getting to give people a positive first experience I don't think this would be like my primary thing or things I do very often for play but like if I got to know someone in my local scene and they were like, wow, I've always really wanted to try this, like in, in a friendly way, in a platonic way, I could give them like their first spanking or show them what a cane feels like. And maybe even demonstrate on myself first before doing it on them because I'm like, unlike a lot of tops and sadists, I'm, I'm about to slander. A lot of them do not like pain. A lot of them do not like, they don't want to practice on themselves. And I'm, I'm fine with that. I do a fair amount of self-play. So I don't think it would be a primary thing, but at least some of it is service focused. And actually, as someone that is a smaller statured woman, you know, I'm like five foot four, size zero, like that's me. I, I definitely like see the appeal of like the domination focused sides of things, which is in interesting because I wouldn't consider myself to like want to be a dom outside of a scene. Like I wouldn't want to have rules for somebody, I wouldn't want to have someone that I'm like, I'm responsible for basically. But I could see in a scene with that feeling of like, I'm in power, I'm in control, I'm the one who's like dictating what's happening. I can see that being really appealing, but just in a scene space. So anyways, lots of self-reflections for myself, hopefully some self-reflections for all of you. Again, I would love to hear your thoughts, your opinions in a comment down below. This is such an interesting thing. I love it when I get to see things like Twitter or Reddit and my brain just goes, okay, I need to have a conversation about this. So thank you all so much for watching. If you did enjoy this and you have not already, please do subscribe because I make videos twice a week about all sorts of kink and BDSM related topics. And then also, if you guys do want to support what I do, the best way you do that is with Patreon. A link to that will be down below. If you do already support me over there, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you all next time. I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.